Hey YouTube, today I'm learning something easy in Fusion 360. I've got a big set of headphones and I'm going to 3D print something to hold them. Hey YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Will. I'm a 65-year-old man that's learning Fusion 360 to be able to create my own custom STL files so I can sell them as print-on-demand items or parts on Amazon and other type of platforms like that. So, um, yeah, welcome to the channel. Uh, today, I've got a big set of headphones. And... They're all over my desk usually, or they're hanging on one of the monitors, and it's usually in the way. So my desk is really kind of old, and I screw things to it all the time. So I'm just going to screw a, a little a little holder on it to, to hold my headphones so it's out of the way. And um, it was so easy to make, I thought I would share it with you. I had found it on a um, YouTube channel uh, called Cloud42. Um, he does a lot of machining uh, work and stuff, but he has a 3D printer and he does some stuff. And he had done one of these a little different, but uh, it inspired me and it helped me to, to, to really get into fusion uh, the first time. Um, once I was able to make one of these, I felt more confident to, to do other things. Um, but let me tell you uh, what we're going to do. What I'll do is take you over to the drafting table. We'll look at a sketch right quick. It kind of explains what we're going to do. And, um, yeah, we'll do that. Let's go. So as you can see here, we're only going to use this much of the sketch. We're going to create a, a 90 millimeter circle and then build two circles inside and outside of that. And the top part of it is actually our holder. Uh, we'll use the circles for the radius and to be able to create the rest of the body. By doing a little sketch like this, this kind of gives you a workflow of how I'm going to create uh, the part in Fusion. So let's go ahead and uh, start a sketch. Um, first, we'll hit the little sketch button here, and we'll pick the plane we're going to draw on. Uh, mainly working in two tabs today. We're going to use the sketch and the solid tabs. So let's go ahead and click on the circle, and you can also hit the C key to create a circle. I'm going to start here in the middle and I'm going to pull it out to 90 millimeters. I'm going to move this line out of my way. Uh, now we want to do a couple of offset circles. So we will click on our circle and hit the O button for offset and I'm going to pull this one out to 10 millimeters and then I'm going to click on the inner circle again and I'm going to go a negative 6 on this one. So that gives us the three circles that we need to create our shelf and our rest of our body. So here we'll click on the line button or the L button. I'm going to start from the middle and I'm going to take it out to the original 90 millimeter circle. As you can see, it kind of snaps into it. So hit the tab button and that's going to set our degree. We're going to set it at 45 degrees and hit enter. Now I want to be able to mirror that line to the other side. So we're going to go over and create a construction line. This will help it to mirror the angle over to the other side. So we click the mirror button and now it, we're going to select the line we want mirrored and then the mirroring line. And as you can see, it popped that right up in there. Hit OK. And now we have two 45 degree angle lines and you see two of our segments are closed off but the outside segment is not quite done yet so let's go ahead and close those off we're going to create a line up to oh that's a construction line so let's go back and turn off construction and make another line and close that one off and we'll close this one off and hit enter and now you can see that our segments are all closed off from the rest of the sketch Let's go ahead and make our mounting block. So we'll take the rectangle button or uh, hit R. And you can pretty much, pretty much make your block any size you want. I'm just going to 
set it here at 45 millimeters and 20 millimeters that's fine um, once the headphones are hanging on it you can't really see too much of it anyway you don't want a huge block in the back in the back so let's go up and hit our solids tab we're going to be using a few different things today one is fillets and one's holes and and really that's all we're going to use uh, other than the extrude button so let's go ahead and extrude our shelf you can hit the E button or um, you can hit the E key. Now I'm just going to do the shelf, these three sections right here. So hold your control button and click those three. And then I'm going to type in 40 millimeters and that's going to bring me out. And as you can see, it took away my sketch. So I'm going to go to my sketch folder and turn that sketch back on. And now you can see where we're going with this. So now I'm going to do the back. Uh, we'll extrude it backwards, a negative 10 millimeters. I'll pick the six sections here, including the shelf size, and hit extrude, uh, negative 10. And that gives us the mounting block in the back of the of the holder. Now it gets a little difficult here because what we're wanting to do is build the lip on the front. So the easiest thing to do is go over to your folder and turn off your body and then we're going to pick these six segments here and then we can turn the body back on and we're going to go over to our extrude menu and we're going to hit uh, let's see, object and then we're going to pick the object we want it to extrude from which is the front of this this and we'll extrude it four millimeters and that gives us our front lip so that really looks good all right so we're almost done let's go ahead and put a couple of holes in it right quick and then we can go to making it look nice uh, by using the fillet button so we're going to hit a hole I'm going to set the hole where I want it and up here you can see there's a simple hole there's counter uh, sunk and counter bore I'm using a counter sunk where I wanted uh, beveled edges for uh, uh, some type of wood screw to, to screw through it I'm going to set it for three millimeters is the size of my hole and I want to make sure the depth is going to go through and that looks good I like it just like that so um, let's go ahead and put one on the bottom we'll create another hole if the hole doesn't go in the right place you can always move it over by grabbing the little dot a little blue dot and put it where you want and we're gonna make this one three millimeters and everything else is good and there we go so now we're ready to finish it up as far as you could go to the printer like this right now and and have it but um, by using some fillets let's go ahead and ease these edges pull this out to 15 millimeters that looks pretty good and that's really going to help us in the 3d printing area because if you had a shelf like the other you would probably have to have supports i'm going to try to do this so we don't have any supports on this I'm going to round this top edge over a little bit more. Two, I don't know, I think a little bit more. Let's try a three. Uh, let's go four. Yeah, yeah. I think that printer will be able to handle that. It looks good. All right, so let's do the back side of that now. I'll click my edge. I'll hit fill it or the F button. And I'll pull this out uh, to right about there. Is, there we go. And now I'm going to pull this out all the way to as far as I can on the edge here. I know I can do both of them at the same time, but I'm just wanting to see where I'm going to be at. 32.5 millimeters. That's fine. Let's go ahead and just match this side. 32.5. Boom. There we go. So now we're creating a body. I'm going to round these edges over. You can hit the control button, click your edges, and you can pull them at the same time. 
And basically, this is what we're doing now. You can experiment on how you want it to look. You can make it go as far in or far out as you want. You can round it over as much. You just got to remember that you're going to be 3D printing this thing. And so it doesn't need to have a lot of overhangs. You want to make it as smooth as possible. Um, the way it's sitting is the way it's going to print. It's going to sit on the back side of the, of the mounting block. How far can I pull? Oh, I'll pull it down to there and then round it over. Yeah, looking good. Go ahead and pick these two corners and we'll round these over. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's round all these fronts and get the edges all rounded off, and then we can get it to the printer. This is actually the funnest part about 3, 360, I think, is, is being able to go in and just take a sketch and turn into a solid. It's like having clay and being an expert. Once you know your shortcut buttons and what your program is actually able to do, Um, it becomes pretty easy and it's amazing that I can just say I need something and, and then make a sketch of it uh, to get my workflow and then send it to the uh, Fusion and now we're in the printer. Now so for some reason when it comes from Fusion to my slicers it comes in smaller. Um, here I'm looking at 54 millimeters and I need it closer to 85 millimeters in, uh, in widths to hold my headphones. So you may have to size it to whatever size that you need for your particular headphones. Well, okay. A very simple sketch. It wasn't very hard at all. Um, just a few circles and blocking it in and then extruding it and rounding it over. And that's the same for a lot of functional parts that you have out there that you're going to do. So um, let's take a look at what we got. Well, it turned out absolutely gorgeous. Look at that. There's the back. Well, let's see if it works, eh? Look at that. That's going to be perfect. So, thanks for sticking around, YouTube. If you made it this far, if you would like and subscribe, it really does help my channel to grow. But until next time, I don't know what I'm printing, but I hope you're printing it with me. Thank you so much, YouTube. See ya.